Praise God, everybody, and welcome to today's broadcast. I'm Pastor Craig Banks, and of course, this is the beautiful love of my life, Pastor Cheryl Banks. Hey, beautiful. Hey. <laughs> of course, you can see that we're doing a little bit different than we normally do, and it's just a sign of things to come. But this is our, as we call it, our Christmas special, and we uh, want to share some things with you together from the Word of God. And so we're so honored that you have joined us today here on the heart of a servant. And so, Pastor Cheryl, honey, it's, uh, it's good to be doing this with you. I am so excited. I'm telling you. And you know, for many people, Christmas means a lot of different things. But we who are the believers and those who love the Lord and who have received this gift, this wonderful gift from heaven into our lives, it means something totally awesome. And so we just want to share uh, with you what Christmas means to us from the scriptures and it's so commercialized now <laughs> yeah. but we really. as believers as kingdom people we want to be able to insert Christ back into uh, the whole scheme of things because on every hand it, it appears that Christ is being taken out um, and, and more commercialization is taking place but Christ has to be the center for us as believers. Well, actually, the very root of it all is his birthday. Amen. And so it would be a, a very dishonorable thing to, uh, it's your birthday, but everybody else is doing whatever they want to do on your birthday. But the party is supposed to be for you. And mm -hmm. so, of course, uh, many know that. Uh, some don't know it. And we want to encourage you to, Keep him at the center of the reason for the season, because it is him. It is Christ. Um, there is a scripture over in Isaiah chapter nine. Um, read that, and let's 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 talk about this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's Isaiah 9, chapter 9, and verse 6. Well, talk about that. Well, you know, I guess the, the main thing about this to me, and this has just been in my spirit, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. We have been given the greatest gift that we could ever have because through the gift of Jesus Christ, it gave us the privilege to become his, uh, God's sons and daughters, his children. And so by him, uh, the Bible says over in first, uh, over in St. John chapter one and verse 12, as many as received him to them, gave he the power to become the children of God or the sons of God. And so I know a little something about adoption and it is amazing to know that God loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son so that we could become a part of his family. He wanted us. Yeah. He chose us. Yeah. And, Amen. And that is the reason, again, for Christmas uh, is the celebration of Christ. Christ being uh, the Messiah, uh, being the one that God promised back in the garden when uh, his child Adam committed high treason. Yeah, in so many words, God says, I'm coming to get you, son, and I'm going to do it the right way and legally to restore you back to where uh, you fell from. And his restoration is the restoration of all mankind, but it's done through 
Jesus our Lord. Of course, Christ is not his last name. I don't know exactly, I don't know what his last name was, and I'm pretty sure God uh, kept it that way because some folks would uh, think that they have a, uh, some type of right to the name uh, or make them exclusive if they had the same last name that, that the Lord Jesus had. But uh, with that being said, there are so many things in the scripture, Pastor Cheryl, that um, uh, lets us know how beautiful and wonderful um, Christmas is, the, the, the whole picture from the time that uh, Christ was born and, and all uh, that he did while on the earth. Of course, in this scripture you just read, it says, unto us a child is born, Amen. unto us a son is given. And so the son being the Lord Jesus, um, he's God's son. He's, he was with the father from the beginning. But because of our need for redemption, Amen. for salvation, God's plan of salvation was already in place. He didn't reveal it until he got ready. Amen. And it's all unfolded in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the son is had to become a child or born into this earth. Amen. And for him to be born into this earth was a miracle uh, to us. But for God, nothing's impossible. Amen. But God himself Amen. birthed himself into the earth wow. so that he could redeem us. And that's what the Christmas story is about. Uh, we call it the Christmas story. But how he was birthed into the earth Hallelujah. supernaturally. And the purpose was to redeem mankind who was trapped uh, uh, in, in a world of sin under the, the thumb of Satan and all of his bunch. Amen. So uh, I think it's, uh, let's look at um, the book of Luke, Amen. the gospel of Luke, because Luke gives somewhat of a detailed uh, picture of, um, of the Christmas story. Of course, uh, I don't know how many of you are, but when I was coming up, we had, uh, we had the, uh, the, the Christmas plays and we had the, the uh, nativity scene and I think the nativity scenes are wonderful. Uh, only thing is with the nativity scene traditionally, uh, the, the, they have three wise men there. Right. But when you read the scripture, the wise men didn't come until the Lord was a toddler, uh, a bit older. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it didn't say that there was three of them. Um, there could have been several. But however many there were, there was a whole lot of people with them because they carried tremendous wealth. And so they even had to have bodyguards wow. uh, to travel with them. But uh, time won't permit us to read the whole story. But in, in the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, uh, in, in verse 26, it talks about in the same, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Nazareth is an out-of-the-way place. Uh, you don't you don't put it on your your list to go visit Nazareth. <laughs> you know, it's not your Dallas, it's not your New York City, it's not Atlanta and Houston. You know, uh, it's not San Antonio and all those. All, you don't even go to Old Paris. <laughs> Nazareth is not any of that. You know, Nazareth is someplace. You know, it's like oh, this exists. Oh, there's people here, <laughs> and so Gabriel. Uh, who stands before the presence of God, he goes to this city and he's going to a particular person. And when he gets there, verse 28, he says, when he came in, he shows up at the house uh, uh, at, uh, to uh, where Mary's at. And he tells her to rejoice because you're highly favored of the Lord. And um, favor, you're favored among all women. You are favored by God. God has handpicked you. And it kind of shook her up because she's young. And uh, she's like, uh, you know, what is this? Amen. Think about it. If an angel from the Lord just showed up, I'm not talking about some mist, and you're trying to figure out what is that. Here is an angel standing in front of you, and the glory of God is all over him, and it lights the place up, and they suddenly, suddenly now, uh, are in front of you. Wow. Uh, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be like, oh, hey, what's going on, uh, angel of the Lord? That's not how it, it shook her. And so I think many times we spiritualize a lot of things when we read it. You know, oh, you know, she just, oh, I'm just meek and humble. And it wasn't like that. And he said that you are blessed, uh, in favor of the Lord among women. And so it kind of shook her up. He said, don't be afraid, verse 30, for you have found favor with God. You have found favor that changes the dynamics of the game with God. 
you have found favor with God that's actually history, history making favor. This is what the angel is telling her. You, you, not, not everybody, you've been handpicked by God to have favor with him. Amen. Game changing favor. And to fast forward a little bit, remember the Lord's first miracle uh, where the wine was, mm-hmm. uh, water was changed to wine. When she told him at the wedding, she said, we don't have any more wine. And he said, what does that have to do with me? Paraphrasing. Mm-hmm. And um, then she she turned to the servants and said, whatever he says to you, do it. And I always wondered, why why, why does she, why would she say that? Because he said, it's not my time. Mm-hmm. And the Lord reminded me, he said, remember at the beginning when the angel showed up? He, the angels don't talk or give words out of their own. They say what God has said. So Amen. it's like the Lord standing before them, the Lord God standing before her and saying, you got favor with me. You have Amen. game changing favor. Wow. And so that favor didn't end with her just getting pregnant from here on out. You have game changing favor Amen. with and, me. And you shall be blessed among all women. Right. Among all women. And so that that's a lot for the Lord to say, you ask for what you want. And, and it's granted wow. all petitions granted. So, she knew she had favor, game-changing favor mm-hmm. with God. Well, who is the Lord Jesus? He's God in the flesh. Wow. So she, she, she uses one of her favor cards, <laughs> changes, you know, do something and get some wine in here for the wedding. Yeah. And we know the story. Amen. So it happened. Amen. And then it goes back over in Isaiah when he's talking about, I believe in chapter 7, that this shall be a sign mm. of the coming Messiah that a virgin shall conceive. And I know some of you out there has a problem with that, but um, this is America and I do have a right to express my religious beliefs. <laughs> and so I believe the report of the Lord. He said, a virgin, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. There you have the incarnation of of God in the flesh. Well, see, it's it's not like the Lord didn't exist before and then Mary and Joseph or somehow they come together and the seed of man and, and, and the egg of a woman forms this being. God already existed. Amen. But he didn't have a physical body. Because the physical body is for those who are in the earth realm. Amen. And so later, uh, further in the scriptures, in the New Testament, uh, it is stated uh, by, that the Lord said, a body you have formed for me. Amen. So God formed the body. He Amen. did everything on the other side of the womb of, of Mary. Amen. Inserted himself in her womb. And he had to come through the door of the womb to into, get into the, the earth, earth to be here legally. To be here legally. God had to do everything legally. He does not violate his own laws. That's right. And so the thief that came in, he came in uh, illegally. Illegal. Amen. And that's why he doesn't have a body. <laughs> he looks for a body to, uh, demons look for a body to possess Amen. so that they can have manifestation in the earth realm. Amen. That's another story. Amen. But um, it goes on in Luke where he talks about uh, that um, you're going to conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and, and you should call his name Jesus or deliverer um, and everything lining up with the way uh, the Lord had already spoken. This is how God operates. Before Amen. anything happens, he declares it. Amen. And so he declared his coming. The only thing is uh, the devil didn't know and didn't understand and people didn't know and didn't understand, but God knows. And so when the time came, the Bible says in the fullness of time, Christ was born Amen. in the fullness of time. Christ was born. Of course, we know Mary asked a question to the angel. She said, how shall this be seeing that I don't know a man? Why would she ask that question? Because her understanding was to get someone born at birth into the earth. A man and woman must come together. Amen. And so he said, this is going to happen by the, the Holy Spirit, the power of God, he's going to come up on you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. It's going to overshadow you. That's his creative power. And so God, uh, if he took, and think about this now, God masters taking nothing. 
and making something beautiful out of it. Amen. So if you feel like, because I know here during the Christmas season, many right. people have gone through a lot of things. Right. And yeah. they feel like, sometimes you feel like nothing. Let, let me say this. Uh, to those of you out there who uh, this time of year, sometimes it, it's not so much that things have happened, but for some reason, either you're alone or your family's not together or you've suffered a loss or you just feel heavy. You uh, tend to get down for whatever reason. The enemy comes at you to uh, make you depressed during this time and you look at others and it looks like everything's perfect for them and so forth. Uh, and even this year, we uh, lost our son, uh, went home to be with the Lord uh, on May 15th. And this has been quite a trying year for us. But we don't sorrow as those that have no hope. And so I want to encourage you today that no matter what has happened, no matter who has gone on to be with the Lord, no matter what the chaotic situations that are going on in our world today that we see, even in our nation, uh, that we that have received Christ as our Savior and our Lord, there's still joy unspeakable, full of glory and full of hope. We can rejoice in him because he said that I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly, that you might have life. Come on, this, this covers every spear, every aspect of our lives that even in sorrow, we can still rejoice. Even in sorrow, we still have a comforter in his Holy Spirit that he's able to put us over whatever this life He's made us overcomers. That's right. Amen. He came so that we could overcome. He said, I've overcome the world so that you can overcome. He said, my peace I leave with you and my peace I give unto you. And so I speak the peace of God to you uh, today during this time, during this season. Begin to look up and know that your Redeemer lives. And because he lives, oh my God, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all of our fears are gone. We don't have to worry about ISIS and all these different terroristic threats that are going on. The greater one lives yes. on the inside of us, and we can overcome. This is uh, the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And Amen. So we don't even have to worry about or stress over trying to live this life uh, with our own faith. God says, here, I give you mine. God's faith works. Why? Because God is who he is. He is love. He Amen. doesn't just love. He is love Amen. and love never fails. Amen. There is nothing too hard for him. Amen. And when the, uh, uh, Mary asked the angel, uh, how shall these things be? Uh, and he went on to tell her, you know, there's nothing too hard for God, Glory nothing impossible God. for him, Amen. nothing, no thing, no situation, nothing uh, for too hard for him. And then to help her out, he said, uh, go see your cousin Elizabeth because uh, uh, she's pregnant and mm -hmm. she's six months pregnant. And it's Amen. like, wait a minute, that's unheard of because, uh, you know, in the, in the country, they say couldn't, couldn't Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't Liz. Yeah, couldn't Liz. <laughs> she, uh, you know, everybody knew uh, she don't have any children. You know, Never we, could have. We to. all love her, but here she is. You're telling me she's pregnant, and she and, was barren. And so God always gives us, even though we got biblical examples, He always gives us contemporary examples that, uh, like with Mary, she could go to Elizabeth. Uh, you know, in the Scripture in Hebrews, I think it's six twelve. It says, "Imitate those who, through faith and patience, yes, uh, yes. they inherit or, or they receive their walking in the promises." So He's not going to leave you out there. The point is. He came so that, as you said, that we could we could have life, his life, Amen. but we could live life to the full. Amen. God wants you to be happy. Amen. And in the Christmas story, it's, you know, I like Rudolph and, you know, Frosty. And, you know, as a kid, you know, I was a fan of Charlie Brown and his Christmas with the little rinky-dink uh, Christmas tree. Those are little uh, cartoon things, you know, things for children. Uh that's all a part of uh, being creative and don't, you don't throw creativity away. Amen. God gave that to, Amen. to mankind, but don't lose focus of what the season is about. It's not about buying gifts. It's not about uh, being granted an Glory American express God. card and where you can max it up, you know, and uh, 
prove that you really love somebody by buying a bunch of gifts that you can't pay for later or even if you can pay for them it's not in the gifts that we give it is starting with the most precious gift there is Amen. that is god giving his son to redeem us by shedding his own blood he laid down his life so that we could come out of bondage Amen. Uh, the bondage of sin and so it's 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 it's, it's a place for us to rejoice and Amen. get ecstatic about Amen. not just on december 25th when we have where we have marked the day of Amen. his birthday Amen. but that every day would be a day of celebration of life to celebrate each other to honor each Amen. other Amen. um and to let the love of god flow out of our heart and so none of us regardless of our race creed color our nationality wherever we are on the face of this earth we uh can live the life of the love of god Amen. because he first loved us Amen. and he um over in uh i believe it's third john he says, uh, beloved, I wish above all things yeah. that yeah. thou mayest prosper mm -hmm. and be in health, even as your soul prospers. That's total prosperity. God wants, he came for this reason, not salvation is an all inclusive word. Right. Um, soteria, total deliverance, right. deliverance for the whole man. God is concerned about your physical being. He's concerned about your emotional being, your soul, soulish realm. He's, he's uh, concerned about your financial welfare. And there's so much that God wants us to have as his people. And all we have to do is receive this gift. Uh, and then not only as our savior, but as our Lord, when, when we accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ, then he has the rule he has the right of way in our life that he can begin to lead us. Amen. Right. I know some things have happened in some of our lives that has caused us to be, uh, have strongholds and wrong mindsets and things, but there's something in the kingdom called the spiritual uh, laws that govern the kingdom of God. And when we begin to line our life up with those spiritual laws, particularly the royal law of love, that Jesus himself operates in and who God is, when we line up with that and determine that we're going to obey his lordship, then everything that Christ died for will begin to manifest in our life. The favor of God, some things we may not know. God is still working miracles yeah. today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so the same God uh, that the angel talked about that, that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you and cause these things to be. I want you to know even this day and this hour, the Holy Spirit is in the earth and he is here to manifest and do what we cannot do and make happen what we cannot do in the earth realm. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be wondering, well, how do I, how do I do this? Um, you know, um, uh, make Christ Lord of my life. And it's, it's like Mary did. She couldn't produce the son herself. She Amen. was a virgin. Amen. And she said, how shall this be? And after the angel explained to her, then she said these words, uh, let it be unto me Amen. according to your word. So what do you mean? Jesus Christ, our Lord, he is the word of God Hallelujah. that became flesh. Amen. And so when we receive his word, then we're believing his word mm. and it's whatever you said, let it be unto me. And so to receive him as Lord is very simple. It is simply praying this prayer. Mm. Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the son of God. You died for me. I receive you as my savior. Fill me with your spirit that I might live for you Amen. in this earth realm. Amen. And it's that simple. Amen. 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 And the word amen simply means let it be so. Amen. And so it is, uh, let me toss this in also about um, the, the Christmas story. Uh, some people think it's just something made up, but there's nothing about the story of, of Christ's birth that is a fluke. Even the time frame that he was born, it was no coincidence that Caesar required throughout the land, throughout their, the rule of the Roman Empire, that there be a census taken. Just like here in the U.S., we have a census. And that's where everybody lives, who they are, how many people in the family, their names, their ages, and so forth. While they went, Mary and Joseph went to take the census, 
to fill out the census papers. She gives birth. So because she's given birth, she's got to put the baby Jesus name, fill out the paperwork on him. How, how long he was, how much he weighed. Well, you know, he's eight and a half pounds, quite a big, you know, big baby. Uh, all of that is documented. Amen. Why? Because God does everything legally, just Amen. as you explained Amen. a moment ago. And so uh, God does everything legally. Oh, and so we have been legally redeemed by his blood. And that means that we are legally uh, children of God. We are legally uh, men and women of God who are to rule and reign in this earth and function as kings and priests. Amen. Well, you know, uh, whenever you start having fun, time starts slipping away. And, uh, but we're so glad that you guys have joined us. Let me, uh, let me uh, invite you to come and join us on December 31st, New Year's Eve at Canaan Christian Center. We'll be having a wonderful New Year's Eve celebration, and it's going to be uh, some tremendous praise and worship, testimonies, uh, a great, great time of fellowship, and a dynamic and powerful word from the both of us that we're going to be sharing. And part of it is strategies for uh, the new year strategies from the kingdom of God for the new year. It will bless you tremendously. Uh, check out the screen. It'll tell you uh, how to be a part of this. And uh, we're so glad that you have joined us. Now we're going to be doing more of this, uh, this type of setting uh, in next year uh, to share with you things that God is doing. We are so glad that you have joined us today. And uh, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that the peace of God will overwhelm your life and set all things back into their proper order. And we want you to have the heart of the ideal servant, the Lord Jesus. We love you. Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us for the heart of a servant, an outreach ministry of Canaan Christian Center in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. If you are in the Pine Bluff area, We'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our United Prayer on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and for our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7. We would also like to give a special thank you to all of our covenant partners. If you are interested in becoming a covenant partner, please visit our website or send us an email. We are Canaan Christian Center, praying that you have the heart of the ideal servant.